here for its own joy. A head has one use, for loving a true love. Legs, to run after. Love is for vanishing into the sky. The mind, for learning what men have done and tried to do. Mysteries are not to be solved. The eye goes blind when it only wants to see why. A lover is always accused of something. But when he finds his love, whatever was lost in the looking comes back completely changed. On the way to Mecca, many dangers. These, the glowing sand, only camels milk to drink. Still each pilgrim kisses the black stone there with pure longing, feeling in the surface the taste of the loose he wants. This talk is like stamping new coins. They pile up, while the real work is done outside by someone digging in the ground. 107. The phrasing must change. Learn about your inner self from those who know such things, but don't repeat verbatim what they say. Do we to let everything be the name of Joseph, from celery seed to aloe wood. She loved him so much she concealed his name in many different phrases, the inner meanings known only to her. When she said, the wax is softening near the fire, she meant, my love is wanting me. Or if she said, look, the moon is up or the willow has new leaves or the branches are trembling or the coriander seeds have caught fire or the roses are opening or the king is in a good mood today or isn't that lucky. Or the furniture needs dusting or the water carrier is here or it's almost daylight or these vegetables are perfect or the bread needs more salt or the clouds seem to be moving against the wind or my head hurts or my headaches better. Anything she praises, it's Joseph's touch she needs, any complaint, it's his being away. When she's hungry, it's for him. Thirsty, his name is a sherbet. Cold, he's a fur. This is what a friend can do when one is in such love. Sensual people use the holy names often, but they don't work for them. The miracle Jesus did by being the name of God, Zulika felt in the name of Joseph. When one is united to the core of another, to speak of that is to breathe the name who, empty of self and filled with love. As the saying goes, the pot drips what is in it. The saffron spice of connecting, laughter, the onion smell of separation, crying. Others have many things and people they love. This is not the way of friend and friend. Zoe, the guest house. This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows, who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still, treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing, and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes, because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Zero Og. Nine. The pickaxe. Getting to the treasure beneath the foundation. On the pickaxe. One view of identity is that it's a structure made of what we identify with. Rumi says that identity ML. Safety torn down, completely demolished along with its little tailoring shop, the patch sewing of eating and drinking consolation. Inner work is not all ecstatic surrender. Don't listen too often, Rumi advises, to the comforting part of the self. That gives you what you want. Pray instead for a tough instructor. 
Nothing less than the radical disassembling of what we've wanted and gotten, and what we still wish for, allows us to discover the value of true being that lies underneath. The pickaxes for Rumi, represents whatever does this fierce attention work. Clear discernment, a teacher's presence, simple strength, and honesty with oneself. D. Pickaxe dismantles the illusory personality and finds two glints in the dirt. Light eyes they are, but these jewel lights are not personal. Rumi points to a treasure within our lives unconnected to experience. It is intrinsic, beyond calculation, a given, reached after the ego is cleared away in a one-pointedness dig, under the premises. WHO makes these changes? Who makes these changes? I shoot an arrow right. It lands left. I ride after a deer and find myself chased by a hog. I fought to get what I want and end up in prison. 110. I dig pits to trap others and fall in. I should be suspicious of what I want. Why wine is forbidden? When the prophet's ray of intelligence struck the dim-witted man he was with, the man got very happy and talkative. Soon, he began unmannerly raving. This is the problem with a selfishness that comes quickly, as with wine. If the wine drinker has a deep gentleness in him, he will show that, when drunk. But if he has hidden anger and arrogance, those appear, and since most people do, wine is forbidden to everyone. On Resurrection Day on Resurrection Day your body testifies against you. Your hand says, I stole money. Your lips, I said meanness. Your feet, I went where I shouldn't. Your genitals, me too. They will make your praying sound hypocritical. Let the bodies doing speak openly now, without your saying a word, as a student walking behind a teacher says, this one knows more clearly than I the way. Who? The dream that must be interpreted. This place is a dream. Only a sleeper considers it real. Then death comes like dawn, and you wake up laughing at what you thought was your grief. But there's a difference with this dream. Everything full and unconscious done in the illusion of the present world, all that does not fade away at the death waking. It stays, and it must be interpreted. All the mean laughing, all the quick, sexual wanting, those torn coats of Joseph, they change into powerful wolves that you must face. The retaliation that sometimes comes now, the swift, payback hit, is just a boy's game to what the other will be. You know about circumcision here. It's full castration there. And this groggy time you live, this is what it's like. A man goes to sleep in the town where he has always lived, and he dreams he's living in another town. In the dream, he doesn't remember the town he's sleeping in his bed in. He believes the reality of the dream town. The world is that kind of sleep. The dust of many crumbled cities settles over is like a forgetful dose. But we are older than those cities. We began as a mineral. We emerged into plant life and into the animal state, and then into being human, and always we have forgotten our former state, except in early spring when we slightly recall being green again. That's how a young person turns toward a teacher. That's how a baby leans toward the breast, without knowing the secret of its desire, yet turning instinctively. Humankind is being led along an evolving course, 
through this migration of intelligences, and though we seem to be sleeping, there is an inner wakefulness that directs the dream. And that will eventually startle us back to the truth of who we are. The pickaxe. Some commentary on I was a hidden treasure, and I desire to be known. Tear down. This house. A hundred thousand new houses can be built from the transparent yellow carnelian. Buried beneath it, and the only way to get to that is to do the work of demolishing and then digging under the foundation. With that value in hand all the new construction will be done without effort. And anyway, sooner or later this house will fall on its own. The jewel treasure will be uncovered, but it won't be yours then. The buried wealth of your pay for doing the demolition. 113. The pick and shovel work. If you wait and just let it happen, you bite your hand and say, I didn't do as I knew I should have. This is a rented house. You don't own the deed. You have a lease, and you've set up a little shop, where you barely make a living sewing patches on torn clothing. Yet only a few feet underneath are two veins, pure red and bright gold carnelian. Quick, take the pickaxe and try the foundation. You've got to put this seamstress work. What does the patch sewing mean, you ask? Eating and drinking, the heavy cloak of the body is always getting torn. You patch it with food, and other restless ego satisfactions. Rip up one board from the shop floor and look into the basement. You'll see two glints in the dirt. Thicker. A naked man jumps in the river, hornets swarming above him. The water is the thicker, remembering, there is no reality but God. There is only God. The hornets are his sexual remembering, this woman, that woman. Or is a woman, this man, that. The head comes up, they sting. Breathe water, become river head to foot. Hornets leave you alone then. Even if you're far from the river, they pay no attention. No one looks for stars when the sun's out. A person blended into God has not disappeared. He, or she, is just completely soaked in God's qualities. Do you mean a quote from the Quran? 114. All shall be brought into our presence. Join those travelers. The lamps we burn go out, some quickly, some last till daybreak, some are dim, some intense, all fed with food. If a light goes out in one house, that doesn't affect the next house. This is the story of the animal soul, not the divine soul. The sun shines on every house. When it goes down, all houses get dark. Light is the image of your teacher. Your enemies love the dark. A spider weaves a web over a light, out of himself, or herself, makes a veil. Don't try to control a wild horse by grabbing its leg. Take hold the neck. Use a bridle. Be sensible. Then rise. There is a need for self-denial. Don't be contemptuous of old obediences. They help. The core of masculinity. The core of masculinity does not derive from being male, nor friendliness from those who console. Your old grandmother says, maybe you shouldn't go to school. You look a little pale. Run when you hear that. A father's stern slaps are better. Your bodily soul wants comforting. The severe father wants spiritual clarity. He scolds but eventually leads you into the open. Pray for a tough instructor to hear and act and stay within you. D5. We have been busy accumulating solace.
make us afraid of how we WSERE. I honor those who try to rid themselves of any lying, who empty the self and have only clear being there. Dervish at the door. A dervish knocks at a house to ask for a piece of dry bread, or moist, it didn't matter. This is not a bakery, said the owner. Might you have a bit of drizzle then? Does this look like a butcher shop? A little flour. Do you hear a grinding stone? Some water. This is not a well. Whatever the dervish asked for, the man made some tired joke and refused to give him anything. Finally the dervish ran in the house, lifted his robe, and squatted as though to take a shit. Hey, hey! Quiet, you sad man! A deserted place is a fine spot to relieve oneself, and since there's no living thing here, or means of living, it needs fertilizing. The dervish began his own list of questions and answers. What kind of bird are you? Not a falcon, trained for the royal hand. Not a peacock, painted with everyone's eyes. Not a parrot, that talks for sugar cubes. Not a nightingale, that sings like someone in love. Not a hoopoo bringing messages to Solomon, or a stork that builds on a cliffside. What exactly do you do? You are no known species. You haggle and make jokes to keep what you own for yourself. You have forgotten the one who doesn't care about ownership, who doesn't try to turn a profit from every human exchange. 1L7Z X dot Artist flirtation with surrender, wanting new silk harp strings. On flirtation, the design on the curtains is not what they conceal. Artists love shapes for enclosure, the chain cup beside the waterfall is a way of tasting the waterfall and maybe even the presence of someone meditating in the cave behind it. Forms keep splitting there prickly, but the old harper wants one more set of silk strings. Some subjects have seen the beauties of art as something that can slow down soul growth. Art gives a teasing taste of surrender without the full experience. Musical poetry can keep one on the verge of the oceanic annihilation in God. Rumi said, we've been walking in the surf holding our robes up, when we should be diving naked under, and deeper under. Omar and the old poet. The harper had grown old. Eileen's voice was choked sounding and harsh, and some of his harp strings were broken. He went to the graveyard at Medina and wept. Lord, you've always accepted counterfeit coins from me. Take these prayers again, and give me enough to buy new silk strings for my harp. He put the harp down for a pillow and went to sleep. The bird of his soul escaped. Free of the body and the grieving, flying in a vast simple region that was itself, where it could sing its truth. I love this having no head, this tasting without mouth, this memory without regret, how without hands I gather. 18. Rose and basil on an infinitely stretching out plane that is my joy. So this water bird plunged into its ocean, Job's fountain where Job was healed of all affliction, the pure sunrise. If this Matthew were suddenly sky, it could not hold half the mystery that this old poet was enjoying in sleep. If there were a clear way into that, no one would stay here. The Caliph Omar, meanwhile, was napping nearby, and a voice came, give 700 gold dinars to the man sleeping in the cemetery. Everyone understands this voice when it comes. It speaks with the same authority to Turk and Kurd, Persian, Arab, Ethiopian, one language. 
Omar went to the place and sat by the sleeping man. Omar sneezed, and the poet sprang up thinking this great man was there to accuse him. No, sit here beside me. I have a secret to tell you. There is gold enough in this sack to buy new silk strings for your instrument. Take it, buy them, and come back here. The old poet heard and realized the generosity that had come. He threw the harp on the ground and broke it. These songs, breath by breath, have kept me minding the musical modes of Iraq and the rhythms of Persia. The minor ear Afghan, the liquid freshness of the 24 melodies. These have distracted me while caravan after caravan was leaving. My poems have kept me in myself, which was the greatest gift to me, that now I surrender back. When someone is counting out gold for you, don't look at your hands, or the gold. Look at the giver. 119. But even this wailing recrimination, said Omar, is just another shape for enclosure, another joint on the reed. Here's the segment would be hollow, with perforated walls, so food music can happen. Don't be a searcher wrapped in the importance of his quest. Repent as you're repenting. The old man's heart woke, no longer in love with treble and bass, without weeping. Her laughter. In the true bewilderment of the soul he went out beyond any seeking, beyond words and telling, drowned in the beauty, drowned beyond deliverance. Waves cover the old man. Nothing more can be said of him. He has shaken out his robe, and there's nothing in it anymore. There is a chase where a falcon dives into the forest and doesn't come back up. Every moment, the sunlight is totally empty and totally full. A in Egypt that doesn't exist. I want to say words as plain as I say them, but I keep quiet and don't try to make both worlds fit in one mouthful. I keep secret in myself in Egypt. That doesn't exist. Is that good or bad? I don't know. For years I gave away sexual love with my eyes. Now I don't. I'm not in any one place. I don't have a name for what I give away. Whatever Shams gave, that you can have from me. 120. Chinese art and Greek art. The prophet said, there are some who see me by the same light in which I am seeing them. Our natures are one. Without reference to any strands of lineage, without reference to texts or traditions, we drink the life water together. Here's a story about that hidden mystery. The Chinese and the Greeks were arguing as to who were the better artists. The king said, we'll settle this matter with a debate. The Chinese began talking, but the Greeks wouldn't say anything. They left. The Chinese suggested then that they each be given a room to work on with their artistry, two rooms facing each other and divided by a curtain. The Chinese asked the king for a hundred colors, all the variations, and each morning they came to where the dyes were kept and took them all. The Greeks took no colors. They're not part of our work. They went to their room and began cleaning and polishing the walls. All day every day they made those walls as pure and clear as an open sky. There is a way that leads from all colors to colorlessness. Know that the magnificent variety of the clouds and the weather comes from the total simplicity of the sun and the moon. The Chinese finished, and they were so happy. They beat the drums and the joy of completion. 121. The king entered their room, astonished by the gorgeous color and detail. The Greeks then pulled the curtain dividing the room. 
The Chinese figures and images shimmeringly reflected on the clear Greek walls. They live there, even more beautifully, and always changing in the light. The Greek art is the Sufi way. They don't study books of philosophical thought. They make their loving clearer and clearer. No wanting, no anger. In that purity they receive and reflect the images of every moment, from here, from the stars, from the void. They take them in as though they were seen with the lighted clarity that sees them. In your light I learn how to love. In your beauty, how to make poems. You dance inside my chest, where no one sees you. But sometimes I do, and that sight becomes this art. A cue. Drum sound rises on the air, it throbs, my heart. A voice inside the beat says, I know you're tired, but come. This is the way. 122. Are you jealous of the ocean's generosity? Why would you refuse to give this joy to anyone? Fish don't hold the sacred liquid in cups. They swim the huge pool of freedom. C. C. J. Backflow. Union. Naps inside the wind. On Union. There is a great feminine wisdom in these poems. A Jamal quality as opposed to Jello. Many of the images of what it's like to be in union have this tone to them. A baby at the mother's breast. A river moving inside the personal fish, taking it to the ocean. Gnats lost in the wind. A dead donkey that has completely melted with a salt flat. The archery champion who lets the arrow fall where he stands. These are not heroic questing images. What is it to praise? Be particles. During a night of tornadic wind and lightning everywhere whether in North Georgia, a friend murmured, where do hummingbirds go in this? The next morning the hummingbirds, the same ones, were back buzzing at the theater. They know a hiding trick the gnats don't. I think sometimes that poems can be places to hide, office Kodama road closets simulating the experiences they celebrate. What is the soul? Consciousness. Gnats inside the wind. Some gnats come from the grass to speak with Solomon. Oh Solomon, you are the champion of the oppressed. You give justice to the little guys, and they don't get any littler than us. We are tiny metaphors for frailty. Can you defend us? Who has mistreated you? Our complaint is against the wind. 124. Well, says Solomon, you have pretty voices, you gnats, but remember, a judge cannot listen to just one side. I must hear both litigants. Of course, agree the gnats. Some in the east wind, calls out Solomon, and the wind arrives almost immediately. What happened to the gnat plaintiff? Gone. Such is the way of every seeker who comes to complain at the high court. When the presence of God arrives, where are the seekers? First there's dying, then union, like gnats inside the wind. M-E-A-D-O-W-S-O-U-N-D-S We've come again to that knee of seekers no ocean can reach. Tie together all human intellects. They won't stretch to here. The sky bears its neck so beautifully, it gets no kiss. Only a taste. This is the food that everyone wants. Wandering the wilderness, please give us your manna and quail. We're here again with the beloved. This air, a shout, these meadow sounds, an astonishing myth. We've come into the presence of the one who is never apart from us. When the water bag is filling, you know the water carrier's here. The bag leans lovingly against your shoulder.
Without you I have no knowledge, no way to touch anyone. 125. When someone chews sugar cane, he's wanting this sweet.